I'm Michael Pauly, and you're listening to the Featured Voice with Jacques, an audio flow podcast series. Lend these six narrators your ears because they deserve to be heard. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Featured Voice. I'm your host, Jacques. And it's so funny, I don't believe I gave up my name on any of the other episodes, but by this time, I think you guys know who I am. We are on episode four of the Featured Voice, and I'm so excited to get to chat with someone who has that good old-fashioned Southern charm, and this person certainly has it. I can hear it in her voice, I can hear it in her uh, work, and um, something about this show I really love is that I get to reach out and connect with people across various genres and backgrounds. And so I'm looking forward to chatting with today's guest, Pam Doherty. Hi, Pam. Welcome to the Featured Voice. How's it going? Fine. Everything's going fine. Well, good, good. I'm so glad that we were finally able to connect and have you on the show. And um, uh, in case you didn't know, I love to do a little bit of small talk here before we actually get into the meat and potatoes of what you do on a daily basis. And so since we are in December and Christmas is right around the corner, I just have to know if you're one of those persons who look forward to Christmas and actually start decorating after Halloween, after October, or um, are you like me and I, I don't start decorating until like December 20th. I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> well, I used to decorate very regularly, especially when the kids were still here. But now that they're gone, one of them lives on the East Coast. Uh, the other one lives here, but he's got a new, my first grandbaby. So I just, and I don't do a lot of partying. So I don't really decorate much anymore. I put out what my daughter calls creepy Santa. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's it's a sculpture that a friend of mine made and it's actually it's really cool actually it's very very abstract but my daughter calls it creepy santa and so i'll hang a few little you know balls on him but that's about it i'm i just i just don't do much of it anymore okay but so- i'm not a grinch i just don't i just don't everybody everybody else does it so they can do it that's fine I understand. I was the same way, except when my mom used to visit, she would buy all decorations and would decorate my house. And I'm like, I don't really care about that stuff. But if it makes you happy, you know, yeah. And yeah. You know, I'm always doing okay if I have a tree because my dog likes the tree. So it's really about them. But yeah, yeah. I want to see the statue. So when you get a chance, snap snap a picture of it so I can see. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you before the thing airs. How's that? Okay, that sounds wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> so I haven't had a chance to really go and see what it is that Pam does as far as what genre she's been narrating in and things like that. So I think this is a good opportunity for you to kind of give us a little bit of background on your history of becoming an audiobook narrator and did you kind of just fall into it? Did someone suggest that it would be something um, they thought you would be good at? Or what's kind of your history of how you got to where you are now? I have been a professional actress my entire life. Um, I work on stage. I just shot a film Sunday with Are You Sitting Down? I am. I I'm had. Sitting <laughs> I had a little tiny scene with Robert Redford. Oh my gosh, go just, <laughs> just him and me. And I had another little tiny scene with Casey Affleck. Oh so <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm still, it's Thursday and I am still high as a kite. <laughs> it's just did, so, you fan, did you fan girl or did you just try to keep it professional? Like I'm just, I, well, no, with, with Bob, um, <laughs> I was very controlled, very composed. I I wasn't even nervous. Okay. But I I I didn't really engage him 
in much conversation. I think I just felt like I was in the presence of royalty or something, you know. And but he was very nice. Um, he was very generous. Um, they could have used a double when they turned around for the camera on me and behind him. It would have been so easy for them to put a double in there, and they didn't. He was right there giving me all my lines and stuff. So it's just really, really neat. Um, with Casey, I got to have a little conversation. We actually had some, and, and I'll post pictures on Facebook when, um, after the trailer comes out, I can't really post anything until after the trailer comes out, but yeah. So yeah, so I, I do that. I do TV. I do a lot of political radio, a lot of radio, but a lot of political radio, um, stage film TV. I do anime. About 95% of the Japanese translated anime production in this country is done here in Dallas. So I do, I do that. And um, some games periodically. Uh, and I kind of fell into what has happened in the last several years is that we don't go or we rarely go to casting directors offices anymore. We now, we make our own auditions. We self tape, we self videotape and we self tape for audio. And as I learned how to do that, I also became very aware that my daughter, my daughter is an audio book junkie. And I just sort of somewhere in there thought, well, maybe, that's another way I could make money as an actor. All I have to do is figure out how. And that was hell. But <laughs> because I am not a technical person at all. I mean, I can, I'm, I'm better now. I've learned a whole lot. I had to teach myself how to um, record and edit um, uh, audio. So I guess it was this sometime in 2013, I, I found ACX, you know what ACX is, yes. and I put a profile up, I did a few auditions, I sent them to my daughter, she wrote back and went, mother, you're acting too much, stop acting, so, <laughs> gotta love family, yeah. they're our biggest, uh, not critics, but they, they really critique us um, without um, any, uh, um, what's the word? With, without any filters. Exactly. No boundaries. So, uh, so <laughs> that stopped me dead in my tracks about six months. But then I picked up again. I started again, and and I I auditioned for a book. I got it. I had to. I started recording it before I had any idea what I was doing. That poor author. What I put her through. Um, my first book and 30 books later, I, I'm so much better, <laughs> but, um, but you know, I haven't done a whole bazillion books because I still am very actress active as an actress in other media. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, so anyway, yeah, there's that. That's well, kind of how I got started. Well, it's good that you still um, are able to, perform in the other mediums and the different outlets because a lot of people um, that I've chat with they started in theater and they you know still do acting you know when they can get when they can you know get those gigs and things like that but for you you're very active more on the um, the, the acting portion which is good because I think some people you know, spend so much time in the booth and they like it, but you have that face-to-face -face contact with other people, which yeah. I think sometimes is important. And um, so have you found that being able to um, prepare yourself for um, acting gigs, you know, you know, face-to-face -face for, face for TV or movies, and then preparing for audiobooks, how, what are the similarities and the differences in getting yourself prepared for both of those? Um, I, I'd have to say, well, first of all, I should say I still do a lot of work on stage. I did start on theater. That's where I started as well. Okay. And I still, and, and that's, you know, that's where I got my health insurance and my union membership and stuff like that. So, um, preparing 
for an audio book, I want to say for me is somewhat different. It's you're still doing character work, but I, I want to say that I don't, I can't afford the depth of time to get into the history and the background of every sing, the motivation of every single character. If I'm doing an audio book that has 45 characters, you know what I'm saying? You do have to, you do have to know their subtext. I have to know what this character is thinking and feeling at the moment, but I'm probably not going to have written th- a three page background on this character, like I might with a sage character where I'm spending hours every day, seven days, six days a week devoted to just that character. Does that, does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And, and so as far as, you know, working on audio books and things like that, uh, what's been like the most exciting, I guess, book or character that you can think of, that you were just so into it that you feel like, I mean, in when you're narrating, of course, you're supposed to be, again, as one as that character. But if there's one, is there one off the top of your head that you remember that just kind of stood out for you? There actually is, and it, she's kind of over the top. But um, my, I guess my about my third audio book, I landed an author by the name of Katie Graykowski. She's a Texas author, and she wanted someone to narrate her book who um, was, if not a Texas native, just somebody who really understood the Texas culture. She lives in Austin or outside of Austin. And I landed her books only to find that she's a very popular author. And she has written a character in her um this is the Maryland's series it's called the Maryland series and <laughs> there's a book called place your bets getting lucky saving grace and in all three of those books is a character named mama sheree <laughs> and she's bets monroe's mother mm-hmm. and she's like well no i didn't know that well of course not well hail I mean, she's just, <laughs> she says, well, grandma was a witch. So that's why we're singing ding dong. The witch is dead at her funeral. <laughs> and she's just funny. And I get lots of comments on her. Everybody loves that character, but she's definitely a, a real character. I love that. I love the, the accent that you gave her. <laughs> I love it because it still, it so reminds me of, um, <clears throat> Mama's family and I, I, somebody else had the, an accent that reminded me of Kara Burnett from Mama's family or Vicki Lawrence or whoever, uh-huh. and, and that's what it reminds me of. That's how you. That's how you sound. <laughs> <laughs> like Vicki like Lawrence, only with the Texas accent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I don't. I don't think she did. She have a Southern accent when she did Mama. She. I can't remember. Some accent. I bet if you go back and li- listen to. It, yeah. It, yeah. It, kind of sound like that because they were always like mama and she would say yeah. Vince or some she had some kind of twangy accent I don't know where yeah. they lived but she had one so, yeah <laughs> so we'll have to go and take a, a, a listen to those books they sound amazing and and so since you've kind of started with audiobooks and you said that you haven't um, you haven't completed you know hundreds of them yet Um, Are there any genres that you're looking forward to possibly working in in the near future that you haven't tapped into yet? There are. I mean, I just sort of fell in. I'm known on both stage and in um, and the work I do on screen and radio as being funny. I'm a good comic person. And so I just sort of fell into this Southern comic romance Um, genre. So I've done a lot of that and I'm trying now to break out and uh, I'm doing a nonfiction uh, paranormal book right now that I really love. It's my my third nonfiction book and I'm kind of discovering that I really love nonfiction Mm -hmm. because 
I guess it's partly because I'm being a little bit lazy, but I don't have to strain or with, I don't have to work on so many different voices. It can just be my voice. And, and, and it's also, you're learning a lot when you do nonfiction. And, um, I'm just, I'm discovering I like that a lot. Um, I also, uh, I haven't done any like dystopian zombies. I haven't done anything like that yet. Um, and I think it would be fun to do those, but I haven't gotten any. It sounds like you would be really good at the zombie, <laughs> the zombie apocalypse. Now, okay. in, your, in your spare time, I know you you have a lot going on, especially with your career. But do you have downtime where you actually read or listen to books for leisure? And if you do, what's what are you normally listening to or reading? I normally am listening to. Um, and I don't know why this happens, but when even when I pick them off of Audible, I don't necessarily choose them. And I'm always surprised to go, oh, this is a British narrator. Okay. So I find myself listening, always in the car, that's the only place I listen, to mystery, thriller, um, psychological thrillers. Very often with British accents. Um, right now I'm listening to the latest Dan Brown book called origin and it's narrated by a man. So, you know, I, uh, I like suspense. I like thrillers. I de very much like psychological stuff. Um, and that's, that's what I find. I listen to the most. I, I really don't listen to romance. I don't read romance. Somehow that seems to be what I narrate. That's so funny that yeah. there's there's a bulk of people who um, don't narrate the type of books that they normally That they listen to. Yeah, it's so weird how that happens. But you have great comedic timing. I think that's probably why you get a lot of those kind of comedy type romance mm -hmm. books. And um, I can see that, and especially because I can see you in your booth, and I can <laughs> see everything that's going on around. <laughs> Not that yes. anything funny is happening, but you just have this this uh, energy about you that seems like it oh, comes across as you know, kind of fun and bubbly, and yeah, I I can totally see that. But okay. I can also see you um, doing that zombie book. So now I feel like. I need to find you a zombie apocalypse book to narrate. Oh, do, do. I think that um, they are often narrated by young people. And um, I definitely have, you know, my I, I, I don't have an old lady voice yet. But <laughs> it's um, when I'm narrating something where I have to concentrate on the younger voice, when I go back and edit it, I'll go, oh, I sounded like an old lady. <laughs> So I have to lift my, get my voice up and higher. Um, and I think a lot of those are narrated by younger people than I am. But um, who knows? Who knows? No, I'm sure that there are other characters that, I mean, you can do it. I, have, I think you can do it. I, we just have to find the right book for you. Yeah, there you go. You know, I, I'm a full supporter that there is a voice. Everybody has a voice for something. There's a book out there for everybody. You know, within reason, I should say, you know, talented people. So mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that. But um, so <laughs> that's my goal is to find you a zombie book. And OK, um, and, you, and you like more nonfiction, which is interesting because that's probably one area of books that I have not really had an opportunity to listen to on audio. And I, I really think I should um, pick up a couple of nonfiction books. It it just it depends. The the ones I've done, one of them was, uh, it has turned out to be, if not a bestseller, uh, it sells very steadily. I can always count on a, several sales, uh, you know, 20 or 30 a month, and always get the bonuses from them. So that's nice. It's It's called... The Big Book of Gastric Sleeve Surgery. 
I mean, um, I was dying by the time I got through with that one. Oh my God. I did it my best. Another one I did was called Soda Politics, and it was about the politics of big soda and how, meaning, Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, and 7-Up, and how how much money they spend. Um, it's sort of like big tobacco. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, since the – it's when people have when, – when, when third world countries start importing sugar mm-hmm. in, the, in the form of soda – and, and other things like that is when the diabetes cases start going up. And the, the he, we, we know that the health of America has been affected by um, big soda, mm-hmm. as it was by big tobacco. And how much money those those industries spend to get you to buy their stuff anyway, you know? Mm-hmm. So so that was one. I, that was a very interesting one to narrate, and very informative. Right now, I'm doing a book called the phantoms of dixie and it's a book was actually written back in the 70s um man by the name of hans holzer is considered to be the father of the paranormal in the united states although he was born in in austria he wrote a hundred and something books and Crossroads Publishing, which is a publisher that works through ACX, has gotten the rights to have all of his books narrated. And they recently decided that, well, this one maybe could use a female voice. And I got cast, so I'm working on it right now. So I'm, it's all sorts of, I'm telling all these ghost stories from, from, that, are, that happened in the South. This is really cool. I'm, I'm, a real, <laughs> I'm, I'm a real punk chicken when it comes to like ghost stories and spirits and stuff like that. And so I don't know if I want to listen to that one. I mean, you're using your normal voice though, so I might be able to get through it. But oh, but you know what? I'm, it's not, it's not, it's not talking, it's not like, and then there's somebody speaking up on you. It's not like that at all. It's, it's him, it's him investigating. This is a legitimate paranormal investigations where they're going into the houses where the poltergeists are or the ghosts are and they're trying to find the source yeah. it's so it's more about the history and was there and did you build this house on an indian burial ground or did somebody die in the house in 1795 and they haven't found their way to the other side kind of thing so it's no, that did not. It's, that didn't help me at all, Pam. That just, <laughs> no, as, as I, when you said the burial ground, instantly my brain went to the poltergeist, and then all I could see is the girl at the TV saying they're here, and them saying stay away from the light and all of that stuff. And so, <laughs> I, no, I, let's go back to the zombies because at least okay. I know technically they might not exist. <laughs> <laughs> or go back to the the big mama who in Texas. You know, those are my safe zones there. You went way okay. out of my safe zone. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. All right. Next, next question. Moving yeah, on. We'll stick with the soda. I'll 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 listen to the one about the soda and the sugar. That's okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. So now let's talk a little bit about um about those different um dialects and those different accents that you use and so when you're of course in fiction uh it seems like a lot of authors like to put some type of accent there aren't you know some of them are you know just regular general american but in romance it seems like more authors like to give their characters some kind of accent either they're british they're irish they're australian they're southern they're something and so um what would you say would be one of the either um, dialects or accents that is more a part of you that comes really easy to you if, you know, it came across in a character's voice? I think it's definitely the Southern accents because 
<laughs> you know, it, on ACX, you can filter uh, according to genre, accent, age, sex, uh, area of the country. So when I first started doing auditions, I thought, well, I bet I would be good at Southern accents. And, and ever since then, I... That's what I keep landing is accents, is things based in the South. And also, um, I can do several different Southern accents. I can do Georgia. I can do uh, Appalachian. I can do Texas. I can do West Texas. I can do East Texas. That's because I live here and I know them. Whereas if you ask me to do a Brooklyn accent, I can. I have like one New York accent. <laughs> That's all I've got. And there's like, there's Brooklyn and, and I can do Boston and I can do New England only because I've done, I've done plays that were based in those areas. But, um, uh, one author told me that one of the reasons she cast me was that because the actress is based, the narrator's based in the North could only do one Southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> I was going. That's fine. You know, that's probably why I won't get cast in something that's set in New York City because I've only got one New York accent. Uh, unless it's just one person, you can. Yeah, yeah. Single POV, you got that down pat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do that. Or if the person, if you have a person that's that's from Boston and somebody from New York, then you got both of them. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> See, there's always a way around it. I guess. See? Yeah, but but in truth, there are you know there's a Long Island accent and there's a there's a Brooklyn accent. There's a South Bronx accent. I mean, there just there are lots of different accents right. in that area. Yeah. So anyway, anyway. Yeah. Well, so do you find that you have to do something different to kind of get yourself? Um, prepare for those accents and I'll just say yesterday my mom and I were watching TV and this guy had this southern accent and he was just doing all kind of stuff with his mouth and his face and so my mom was like I wonder if he's doing that so he can get that accent well that's just the way he talks and so do you <laughs> do you ever find that you have to kind of do some kind of different things to uh to give yourself, give your character that certain voice, or is it just really natural for you to just kind of go with whatever that tone or whatever that accent is for that character? Okay, so for example, um, I did a book called uh, Sealed with a Kiss, which is historical uh, romance, and I had to come up with, for one, for two scenes, one scene, and it's based in small town Texas. The author is Pamela Morsi, and no, Morsi. And um, it's based in small town Texas in 1890. It's right, right at the turn of the century. And for one scene, I had to come up with 20 different men. Oh. <laughs> in small town 1890, Texas. Oh my gosh. And this was like the sort of like the chamber of commerce of this small town. And in another scene, I had to come up with 20 something women who were having their rose, their tea or their afternoon rose society meeting. So sometimes it's, you can do something with just raising the pitch, changing the breathiness, slowing it down, speeding it up holding your mouth a certain way, um, talking out of the side of your mouth will give you one kind of care, uh, 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 maybe a, a, a hard vocal sound. I mean, when you have to come up with that many different characters and have them energy change, you got to, it's often it's a matter of, and it's also a matter of knowing who that person is. If he's an account, if he's an accountant, He's going to be, he's going to speak more formally and more slowly and more, you know, crisply than the guy who's a farmer yeah. and who just rode down his tractor into town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So those two things, finding a physical way to manifest the accent and knowing who that person is are the two things for me and age is in there also those are the things that that i have to think about when i'm 
coming up with different sounds or different different sounds for different people. Yeah, that's a lot of characters, though. That's like forty people from you. Yep. Yeah, and that didn't even include the leads. Oh gosh, <laughs> you rock! You rock! <laughs> oh, there, listen, veteran narrators. You know, there may be a hundred and something characters in any given book, depending on depending on the book. So, yeah, I think the most I've had in any one book was about 50. Gosh, I do not want to be you ever. I'm, it's, just, <laughs> it's just hard enough with my own voice, you know. <laughs> I'm totally fine with just my voice. <laughs> there you go. All right, so I know that you've been working on some projects this year, and you did submit a sample for us to take a listen to. So can you give us a little information about what we're going to listen to here? Um, this particular book is one I recently finished and I'm about, as soon as I finish this, um, uh, uh, book that you don't, the book that shall not be named for you, um, I'm going to be working on the second one in her series. It's called the Fireflies series and it's based in the South. And, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a romance and there are about six or seven major characters that are all seen in the same, in, in the different books, uh, but with a different focus on different couples in each book. And in this one, um, the two lovers, it's the morning after, um, she is, they're both widowed. He's widowed and so is she. And he's downstairs making breakfast and she's kind of, she's upstairs, she's gotten up and she's kind of looking at his closet and noticing that he doesn't have many clothes in his closet, unlike her memory of her husband who has died. This is her first real, after the death, after she was widowed, her first, um, real relationship she's falling in love again is what's happening and that's the that's the whole um conceit of the book or the plot of the book is the two of them falling in love again and all of the problems that go along with that so this scene takes place the morning after oh the morning after okay (laughs) All right, everybody. And what's the name of the book again, Pam? Um, It's called uh, Fireflies Built to Last. Fireflies Built to Last? To last by by, by Lisa Ricard Claro, who is a fairly new author. And uh, so far, we're just getting, we don't have very many reviews of the book yet, but they're just, people are just loving her writing and loving the narration. So we feel real good about it. And after this sample, we'll have more reviews and, and people okay. will follow the entire series. So here we go, cool. everybody. Here's the sample. On one half of one side, Cal's clothes hung. His shirts, jeans, a couple of jackets. His wardrobe, or lack thereof, didn't surprise her. Cal wasn't the type of man to care about clothes the way Jack had. Jack. She swallowed hard to dislodge the automatic lump in her throat. Best not to think of Jack right now. The other half of the closet lay empty, conspicuous for its lack of use. How had Cal packed up his wife's clothes without saving a one? No favorite blouse, dress, nighty? But no, there was nothing female that Maddie could see. She took a step back and viewed it as a whole. One half of the closet saw little use, the other half sat empty. It might be a metaphor for how she lived without Jack. Maddie gulped, scooped her hair off her face, and pushed it over her shoulders. She buried thoughts of Jack and Gwen. Now wasn't the time to think of them. She'd spent the most amazing night with Caleb Walker, and she wasn't ready to step out of the fantasy. If luck held, it was yet to be over. She poked through his shirts, chose one of light blue denim she'd seen him wear more than once. Its softness spoke of age, so he must favor it. She slid her arms into the sleeves and drew the fabric upward to enjoy the scent. See, that was a nice tease that we we got to the end where she's putting on the shirt and enjoying the the scent of his shirt. 
And you know what? You should do a historic, a historical sex romance zombie book. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? Historical romance second chance zombie books. I didn't, you know, I didn't know that that was. Uh, now that you say it, I realize it's yet another subgenre: the second chance romance. Second chance romance. Romance, yeah. This seems like a nice, sweet story. So, what what's the heat level like in this particular book? The you, it is very light. Very, very light. Um, it, it, I would almost say it's a sweet romance mm-hmm. um, because you know they've slept together, but there's n- absolutely no description whatsoever. It's mm-hmm. just sort of he, she falls into his arms and he starts to slip her shirt off him. But that's it. And then it's the uh, next morning. <laughs> and then it's the next morning. And I know that, I mean, I've talked to some reviewers who have said I'm, could you tell me what the level of heat is? Because I'm not comfortable with the, mm-hmm. you know, the, all of the the uh, hot and horny sex scenes. And so I went, oh, you know, this particular book is is would probably be a good one for you. Yeah, and so it's it's okay to have a little fade to black every now and then because mm-hmm. you know you kind of leave it up to your imagination, and it's about the story and the romance and how mm-hmm. things play out. So you know, it's it. It gives it keeps you from being distracted with all of the other goings on. So like me, yeah. I just picked up that she wants to put a shirt on, which I think is I think men like when women wear their clothes. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's something about that. So yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go pick this up and definitely I wanna give it a review and I will um pass it around to a couple of other people I think will be interested in uh in, in enjoying a nice sweet romance. Second chance, I'm going to call it. Yeah, second chance romance, yeah. Yeah, So, well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Feature Sure! I look forward to introducing everybody your fun facts and sharing your fun facts that you shared with us. So, they will go out through the week when you... Okay. And so, I will learn those things when they come out. I haven't looked at them yet on purpose. Okay. Okay. I just wait and I'm surprised like everybody else. But okay. I, I would love for people to be able to know how to um, either keep in touch with you so they'll know what your um, what's coming next on your product list or just so they can see the funny things that you're doing and see those pictures that we chat about. So how can they find you online? Um, my narrator website is uh, www.therightactor.com. That's spelled T H E W R I T E A C T O R dot com. And that's the best place for us to find you because on your website, will we be able to find, uh, find links to your social media as well? Uh, yeah, I am actually, uh, yes, and I mean, I don't. I can't remember if I've got a Twitter link on there. I'm not a big Twitter person. I'm trying to be, but it's, I'm not yet. Um, I have just started and published, but don't have any details yet. My narrator Facebook page, Um, my regular Pam Doherty Facebook page is just me talking about whatever I'm talking about, you know, so I'm trying, it might very well be, and I will let you know, okay. um, via email that I'll get that page launched. Um, it has more to do with art than anything else. As soon as I launch it, I'll start asking people to like it and I'll be putting samples of everything I've done up and stuff like that. But I just haven't, I, I'm not there yet. Okay. Well, we will be, we will stand by and wait for your your page on Facebook, and we will uh, not look for you on Twitter because you don't tweet. So we will be sure. Well, no, no, you're welcome to look for me. It's also the right actor. That's no, that's my. We'll have to. I, I I do every once in a while. Every time I have a book come out, I tweet then, okay. and I, and I'll tweet a few reviews. Okay. Um, and li- and I always put links in them, but I'm not somebody who tweets every single day like a lot of people do. So, well, we will we will become more um, engaged with you 
on Twitter, and I'll just send you a shout out every now and then and say, "Okay, hey, Pam, what's up? This is your weekly tweet." So you know, okay, have a little uh-huh. social re- interaction there. Okay. Okay. Right. Great. Right. Right. All right. Okay. All right, everybody. So be sure that you are following Pam on her website because you'll find all the upcoming uh, information related to her new releases and. We will be looking for her Facebook page to go live within the next few weeks. And also she is on Twitter. So if you want to help me uh, be engaged with her on Twitter, just go and follow her on Twitter. And every now and then tweet something like, hi, how's it going? And we're looking for creepy Santa or something. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of The Featured Voice. Be sure that you are following us on Facebook at The Audio Flow, also on Twitter at The underscore audio underscore flow. We are also on Instagram at The Audio Flow. This episode will be broadcasted on iHeartRadio as well as TuneIn. You can also download this and other episodes of The Featured Voice from iTunes and Google Play. And as always, we are also on YouTube on the Booking Around Town channel. Until next time, remember, The Featured Voice, everyone deserves to be heard. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of The Featured Voice. Be sure you go and check out today's guest Audible Library at audible.com. If you're new to audiobooks, be sure to download your free audiobook today. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash the audio flow. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash the audio flow for your free book. Be sure you tune in next week as we chat with Lacey Laurel. For this and upcoming information regarding the featured voice, be sure to follow us on Facebook at The Audio Flow, as well as Twitter, The underscore audio underscore flow, and Instagram at The Audio Flow. Until next time, have a great week.